Hello again and welcome to Reading with Miss Tolliver. Today I will be reading a book to you that is entitled Beyond the Ridge. This book was written and illustrated by Paul Gobble. This land is beautiful. Oh son, now for the last time, come greet me again. An old woman lay on her bed. She had lain there for many days. She could not get up. She was dying. The medicine men had done all they could. Her husband and her daughter and grandchildren were beside her. The old woman heard a voice saying, get up. They want you over there. Your mother is calling you. She did not understand. Her mother had died many years before. The mother is calling you, the voice said again. The old woman got up, and as she left the, tip, the teepee, she turned and saw herself lying under her blanket with all her family around her. They looked sad and worried. My mother is calling me. I must go to her, she told them, and yet she did not think that they heard. Her dogs knew that they could not go with her. The voice seemed to, to lead her away from the camp towards a high pine covered ridge. As she started to climb, the, she realized that she was wearing her favorite dress and moccasins. She did not remember putting them on. She knew that she had to climb up to the ridge, but it was so far away and so high. She did not think she could hear or ever reach the top. Her teepee was far away behind her, but she could plainly hear her husband speaking. She heard him say, I do not think she is breathing any longer. Her grandchildren were crying. She wanted to go back and tell them not to be sad because she was up again and feeling better. The words would not come and her feet led her slowly up towards some great boulders and pine trees near the top. Listen, your mother calls you, the voice said. She listened. She could not hear her mother calling. She climbed on. When at last she approached the ridge, she could glimpse a view between pine trees. And then over the tops of the weathered boulders, she saw a country stretching blue and green in the distance. It was the most wonderful view that she had ever seen. Cooling breezes moved up the slopes from the beautiful country on the other side. Everywhere she looked, there were butterflies and birds. Everywhere there were herds of buffalo and antelope. The ground was bright with flowers and sloped gently down towards the river in a circle of tulips. She could still hear her grandchildren crying. She wanted to go back. She had to tell them there was no need to cry. They want you over there, she, she again heard the voice. Your mother is calling you. And then she could hear, ah, the voice she knew so well. She looked down towards the circle of tulips and there was her mother walking with arms outstretched. She was smiling and looked young and beautiful. And behind her mother were her father and grandparents and all the people she had known who had died a long ago. She felt strong again. The way down from the top was so easy and beautiful. She even wanted to run there. There was no other path to take. Anything that has a birth, birth must also have a death. The spirit is not born with a person, but is given at the time of birth. Therefore, because the spirit has no birth, it will never die. Her husband and her daughter and grandchildren knew that her shadow was traveling towards the land of many tulips. She was dead. Now it was only her body which lay on the bed. An awful feeling of loneliness and emptiness took hold of everyone who had gathered in the teepee. But there were things to do. The woman washed her 
and they put her on blue clothes dressed with head, elk teeth, shone all over it. They combed and braided her hair and painted her face with red paint. They placed beside her all the things which she had been used to and enjoyed when she was alive. Her awl and knife, her elk horn, hide scraper, her paints and quill embroidery bag. The, the spirits of those things would pass with her shadow into the spirit world. They wrapped her in a buffalo robe, which had once painted. They tied it tightly. They would never see her face again. Nobody could take her place. They took her away from the camp along the creek and put her on a platform along the branches of an old cottonwood tree. The earth would soon take, take her back. Her body and her spirit would be free in the winds and clouds. Her family stayed under the tree. They brought food for her journey along the pathway of the souls. They did not want her to leave them. They felt they would always cry. Even the crowns were mourning. mourning. I'm, death seems like the end, but it is not. The body goes back to the earth, but the spirit lives forever. We are not left alone. The dead and the living and those who will one day be born are part of a great circle. We are all together within this circle. It is so. Praise the creator, the great spirit. <clears throat> The pathway of this life leads into the pathway of the next life. Those who, gave, who have gone beyond the ridge travel south along the Milky Way, the spirit trail, the ghost road. We can see it hanging in the night sky, the trail emulated by the mirrored campfires of the spirits moving towards the spirit world. We shall reach a fort in the trail where there sits an old woman called Hanin Kara or Owl Maker. Those who have led good lives pass her to the right, towards Winning Gate, the land of many teepees. Those who have led bad lives, she pushes into the left along the short path where the spirits fall off back to the earth and wander for time as ghosts. <clears throat> No man knows where the spirit world is. The ancient people said that it was beyond the pines. The pine trees are at the edge of the world, and beyond them is the path of the winds. The spirit way begins there at the edge of the world, among the stars, and the winds will tell the spirits of people where to find. Death there is no death, only a change of worlds. <clears throat> In. I hope you enjoyed this book today, Beyond the Ridge. I will see you the next time reading with Miss Tolliver.